Welcome to Next in Tech, an S&P Global Market Intelligence podcast where the world of emerging tech lives. I'm your host, Eric Hanselman, Chief Analyst for Technology, Media, and Telecom at S&P Global Market Intelligence. And today, we're going to be talking about Latin American data center markets with my guest, Pedro Schweitzer. Pedro, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Eric. Thank you for having me. Excited to have an interesting conversation today. And an interesting one indeed when we think about what is a market in the data center world that really has both undergone a lot of change and yet has a lot of major forces playing in it as we see in what's taking place. Before we dive into a lot of the details, can you give us a bit of a feel for sort of really what the state of the Latin American data center market really is about today, how the reasons differ, or really some background into really what it's all about? Yeah, absolutely. It's been an interesting three years for the data center market in Latin America. It's an interesting time to be a provider there now. The market has completely shifted post-COVID. There has been an emergence of essentially a whole new segment in data centers in Latin America that was a very small part of the business beforehand. So when you look at the Latin America data center market nowadays, what you see is a very clear division between a wholesale segment servicing cloud providers and hyperscalers in the region. Uh, which is the segment seen by far the most growth, and a retail segment servicing enterprises and smaller customers who are also seeing some growth because they're undergoing their digital transformations and moving into third-party data centers in the region. Of course, Latin America as a whole is a very complex and large region. We have over 660 million people who live in Latin America. You have over a dozen countries, a dozen governments, so it's very much painting with broad brushstrokes here. But it is a region that as a whole, I can say, has seen a lot of growth, primarily driven by those hyperscaler customers. What we see nowadays is the emergence of three primary wholesale markets in the region. They are Sao Paulo in Brazil, Santiago in Chile, and Querétaro in Mexico. Those cities have seen by far the most builds for hyperscaler customers, and that's for a variety of reasons. Each of them has distinct traits and, and characteristics. They present very conducive environments for business. And we've seen that data center providers in the region have really moved into those cities in full force. For us, our numbers here indicate that the growth we're expecting to see for those markets in the next three years, 60% of the growth for the entire region, data center markets are going to be in those three cities. So really the business is a lot more concentrated in certain areas but it is seeing a huge surge in growth and a lot of momentum in the years since COVID. Well, it does seem like something, though, that you paint them with a single brush at your peril, trying to treat those markets as relatively common. There, there are some significant differences across them, yeah? Yes, absolutely. I think when you're talking about Latin America, you really have to draw a distinction between the countries we're discussing. As a whole, what we see in the region is there are some large populational hubs and each of the cities and, and the location, as I mentioned, are either populational hubs themselves or very close to a populational hub. So to mention first Sao Paulo, Brazil, I think that is clearly the industry's oldest and largest market nowadays. It's a huge populational hub. The metro area in Sao Paulo has over 20 million people ranks easily in the top 10 of the largest metro areas in the world. We see that providers there in particular are just continuing. Uh, there is a natural progression of where the business was pre-COVID. Cloud providers were already somewhat present in Brazil earlier, and now they are just growing and providers are keeping up with that growth. Whereas markets like Santiago and Querétaro are more recent industry favorites. Querétaro is about 100 miles away from Mexico City, another huge populational hub. Mexico is an interesting case study because of its proximity to the U.S. It was a severely underserved market up until COVID because providers didn't really see a reason to move into that market and build a large data center infrastructure there. They could just service clients from the U.S. COVID, of course, uh, with all of its interesting consequences, brought upon this need to be closer to the end user. And when you look at Latin America, Mexico is the second largest country with over 120 million people. So being close to Mexico City made sense. And that's when we really see a larger push for Mexico and Querétaro specifically because of its location, which it is less prone to natural disasters such as earthquakes. And it also provides great connectivity to the southern U.S. And lastly, Chile, which I believe out of the three is probably a really unlikely hero in the industry. 
Chile is a small country, about 20 million people. Santiago, however, has really risen to the occasion and become an industry favorite in Latin America. That's mainly because the country of Chile is one of the more stable economies in Latin America. It's also incredibly open to foreign investment. So data center providers and investors are like feel a sense of confidence moving into Chile. And the last and really interesting point there in Chile is its potential connectivity implications. The current development of the Humboldt Cable, which would connect Chile to Australia and Asia Pacific, consequently, that really brings about a lot of interest in what the future holds for Chile. And that's why we see a lot of data center developments there as well and cloud provider interest too. So those three markets are the clear, as I said, the largest markets in the region by far, the clear winners, but each of them see very distinct circumstances and some of them see obstacles as well. That's fascinating because, I mean, you look at Brazil, which has had such a, a long tech history, you know, very tech dense in terms of its environment. You know, Chile, of course, you know, there was a lot of early work there in energy, minerals, mining that drove a certain amount of tech location. And then Mexico in stepping out of the shadow of its adjacency to its uh, northern neighbor. Uh, interesting to see how those are playing out. Yeah, it's definitely a moving picture, I would say. All of this has developed within the last three years, like I said. There are some other industry favorites emerging. None of them at the level of the three I just mentioned quite yet, but another market that really has caught providers' eyes in the recent years is, for example, Bogota in Colombia. And that's more of a central location in the region that would allow for a potential fourth market to emerge. So really, each of these markets is kind of seeing a certain level of activity. They're each kind of progressing. Like we said, Brazil started early. So the growth in Sao Paulo is not the same growth we're seeing in Santiago, for example, because Santiago is almost like catching up, seeing so much demand that the infrastructure there isn't enough quite yet. So we're seeing huge levels of growth in Santiago, same for Mexico, but different circumstances, which is really fascinating to watch. Oh, wow. Well, you mentioned the, the hyperscale cloud providers. Mm -hmm. What kind of role are they playing in these markets? Well, they are absolutely the number one driver of anything data center in Latin America, it feels like. Obviously, I say that kidding, but there is some truth to it. You know, we're, we're talking about the wholesale segment here. There is the enterprise segment as well, which I'll get into. But when you talk about wholesale, cloud providers really have made a push into Latin America since 2020. We've seen over a dozen new cloud regions in Latin America, primarily focused on the countries I mentioned, Brazil, Mexico, Chile, and some early interest in Colombia. And those cloud providers are moving into to Latin America for that proximity to the end user. We've seen higher adoption of their services with new work from home guidelines, companies adapting to the new normal and undergoing their digital transformations and uh, adopting cloud services. So cloud providers feel a need to be in Latin America, that's clear. And that obviously has an impact on data centers and their services. So with cloud providers so clearly pushing into Latin America in these last few years, we've seen the wholesale segment essentially emerge in Latin America. We had a few providers pre-2020 who serviced them as customers beforehand. However, nothing at this level, and I wouldn't even say it was a segment on its own in the region, it definitely has emerged as almost as a separate business entity, uh, so much so that you see companies popping up entirely dedicated to servicing those hyperscalers. So cloud providers have made a major point that they want to be present in those countries. They rely on data center infrastructure, Many providers will often choose up to three data centers uh, in a single market they're present in. So even one cloud service provider being in a market could already spur enough big amount of data center business. Uh, and data center providers have been trying to keep up. And what's interesting to watch is that with uh, that move into Latin America, these global cloud providers are also bringing in higher operational standards. So we see data centers that are emerging with higher quality a certain emphasis on workforce training, and all these metrics that previously uh, were lacking in the region because you have customer requirements coming from hyperscalers. Uh, and the same goes for sustainability, for example. We see a lot of data center providers prioritizing sustainability because they know that's what the customers want. Um, so for the region, it's been really, really beneficial uh, for the wholesale segment in particular. When you look at enterprise, as I mentioned, we see larger adoption of cloud services uh, from those customers. There has also been a notable increase, as is the case across the globe, for hybrid IT. Uh, more customers are customizing their workloads. They're looking for uh, more flexible IT solutions. Enterprise side of things as well, I think it's been very attractive 
because customers are almost becoming less afraid and more educated on data center services. So with hybrid IT, they might opt to keep uh, a lot of their workloads in the cloud, but there's also a component that's physical that they're going to keep in the data center. So it's also had this uh, sort of ripple effect on the enterprise side of the business as well. Uh, and it seems like one of those situations that we see so often, which is that balance starts to you know swing back and forth uh, as there is more cloud capacity uh, to be consumed you know within region. You now have greater investment in you know, data center space uh, because you're now pushing more uh, of your infrastructure you know, off-prem you know, into co-location uh, and, and that sort of back and forth. And it seems like this is all happening in a market in which the levels of service capabilities that are available because the hyperscalers are now consuming more of that are all the more available, which just sort of raises the bar for the entire environment. Yes, precisely. For us, it is almost a sign of market maturity. Latin America historically had data centers that were run and operated by large telecoms, right? The telcos. Uh, and we're looking at a telco model, the data center is really at the center of, of a telco's business model. For Latin America, that meant uh, a lot of data centers that went with very little to no upkeep and essentially became legacy facilities uh, that weren't as efficient as they could be. And in the data center business, efficiency is the name of the game. So with cloud providers going into the region and the emergence of those wholesale data center providers looking to service them, we also see a new generation of providers that puts the data center at the center of their business model. And with that comes all the priorities and the focus on efficiency and, and operational uh, upkeep that you didn't have with uh, legacy data centers run by telcos. So it's a very interesting dynamic where you see a gradual exit and a gradual entry of a different segment that has almost led to a metamorphosis within the region's data center sector. Oh, once again, very similar to other markets in which there was the European PTT model, the, the national carrier kind of model that did a lot of the computing in the back end and now moving into an environment in which there's broader demand and upping of the level of, of requirements for capabilities. And as you've identified, that push to efficiency because, hey, the bottom line, it's a business you got to run. Yeah, exactly. And I would say that the difference for Latin America is that that happened in a very short period of time. We started seeing signs of in 2018, 2019, things really picked up in 2020 with COVID. And now we're in 2023. So it's been less than five years. I'd say three years since most of it has happened. It's been going on at breakneck pace and there's no sign of stopping. Interesting. Uh, something that you know, we took in a lot of cases, a lot of the pressures of the pandemic caused a, a lot of acceleration in certain areas, but here it really led to a lot of that maturation. Oh, that's wild. Mm -hmm. So where do you see these markets going? I mean, moving along at this clip, I, I guess they should be covering a lot of ground pretty fast. Yes, exactly. I've actually been lucky enough to visit a lot of these sites in person. And the general consensus is that there's no slowing down anytime soon. I think when you're talking about data center providers, there is a general benefit of operating in a market and utilizing the concept of economies of scale. Once you're in a market, it's very easy to grow because uh, you're familiar with the local regulations. Uh, you've already built a site there, so you know what the process is like. So for providers in the primary markets of the region, the three primary markets, I think growth is, is very clearly uh, what's next for them. So we see a lot of providers have already established a presence in those markets, uh, I would say in 2021, 2022, and now in 2023 and beyond, they're building their second, third, fourth facilities in those markets. So that's one thing. We're going to see a, a continuous growth of those primary markets there. However, there is plenty of opportunity for other markets to emerge. Bogota in Colombia is one of them. That is the clearest front runner as the potential fourth primary market in the region. Bogota benefits specifically from free trade zones, which are very unique to that city. Uh, so a lot of providers have been looking to move in there to benefit uh, from the tax breaks, but also because Colombia has a, a pretty sizable population of approximately 50 million people. And like I mentioned previously, it's, it's very centrally located within the region with access to both the Pacific Ocean and the Caribbean Sea. Uh, so great subsea cable connectivity there too. So Bogota is a, a city that will likely see uh, a lot of industry developments soon. Another potential uh, candidate is Lima in Peru. That is another big city in Latin America that has 
detecting early indicators of cloud provider interest and consequentially data center interest. That one is a little bit further behind uh, Bogota, I would say. It's a different market in that the telcos still have a very large presence there. So it's uh, further behind in that transformation process we just mentioned. And then I would actually mention Brazil as a great growth opportunity because that particular country is so big. So we have providers setting up shop in other Brazilian cities that aren't Sao Paulo. For example, Rio uh, comes to mind as uh, an industry favorite for now. Uh, Some providers are entering it for the first time this year, 2023. Uh, So the city could see a lot of potential growth in the coming years and cities to the south of Brazil as well. We've heard a lot about uh, Porto Alegre, which is located in uh, the country's southernmost state. And that could also serve as a potential point to to service Argentina, which is south of Brazil. Uh, So we could see uh, the emergence of several secondary markets in the region. And that really comes in tandem with the industry favorite, which is edge. And the idea that we have to build these edge deployments across the world. In Latin America, a lot of providers are seeing edge as anything that's outside these primary markets. So uh, secondary markets could really play a role in helping cloud providers get to the edge in the region. And last but certainly not least, we're going to see a continued process of telco divestment. I think telcos have realized that data centers are maybe too costly for them to run. So we might see a few more transactions. We've seen a couple big acquisition deals recently. Uh, telcos exiting the business, and, and I believe we will continue to do so. And when you talk about m and activity in the region, it's also really, really fascinating because you've been seeing uh, larger deals and a shift in mentality from acquiring one to two data centers in a particular market to acquiring an entire platform across multiple markets. So providers and investors that are looking into Latin America, they're no longer interested in just acquiring a single facility, but they're interested in building their footprint uh, in the region. And so they acquired three, four more facilities at a time uh, just to ensure that they're building a platform in Latin America. So m a will likely continue to be something to watch for the region as well. Uh, interesting. Is that something that is mostly driven by the potential for growth? Because that's something that's a little different than what we normally see in M&A activity. Yeah. I would say that what is so different about Latin America data center business is that there is a clear emphasis on local expertise. We're seeing a lot of big industry players emerge that are from the region or started. And the region started mainly in Brazil. A lot of Brazilian players taking big swings. We see some Mexican players as well. And with that, with the local expertise, as international investors come in, they see the value in keeping that. So they're not looking to acquire the single asset, the single facility, uh, and learning how to, to, to run it themselves. But they're looking to acquire the company and the platform because they know they can have someone to run it there with the familiarity required in the region. And I think that comes from the fact that we're talking about a multinational footprint, of course, but also in Latin America, you see several countries that have a complicated regulatory framework. So you really want some expertise in each country you're dealing with to make sure that you're uh, doing everything correctly, that you're following the sometimes complicated scheme of things. And I think that's why there is such a huge difference recently and a move away from buying a few. We see, we do see some transactions, of course, of one or two facilities, but those are mostly uh, local players acquiring from other local players. But when you talk about international investors looking into Latin America, they're often acquiring entire companies or at least three, four data centers at once. Yeah, so it's not a tactical expansion. This is really a much more strategic move with an understanding that you actually have to be buying into the operational model in the local market in order to really master that business. Precisely. And I personally really like the word platform, which is what a lot of providers are using now to define themselves. They're not a data center provider in Latin America. They are a Latin American platform that that many times might be part of a larger provider or might be under an international investor. But they identify themselves as being from the region, created in the region, and able to service clients across multiple markets in the region. Oh, wow. Uh, Any potential headwinds? Um, The thing we see typically, power capacity. Uh, Sounds like in most markets, though, they're in reasonably good shape. Uh, Yes, I think uh, power issues, you know, when, when you compare to other markets, such as certain European markets or some U.S. markets, I don't think there are any issues uh, in the uh, short term quite yet. Uh, One thing we do see as an issue in Latin America is workforce. Um, 
and dealing with uh, a limited skill pool in the region. I think that generally comes with the business, the technology business on its own. We're constantly having to educate and train a qualified work pool in Latin America, like I said, because a lot of these customers, a lot of these hyperscaler customers are bringing in new operational standards. They're having a hard time securing labor in some markets. So you see actually some very aggressive poaching and, and you see a lot of providers unsure of, of how to recruit their own workers because there really is a, a pipeline there set in place for a data center workforce. On the other side, you also see some providers developing their own solutions. So you have a couple of the big players in the region starting their own, what they call universities or intensive courses that help new hires, young people, maybe straight out of college or straight out of high school, pick up the skills necessary to work in a data center and stay with the company. So that is a potential issue there in Latin America, the workforce issue. But I think we've seen the industry really open to, to changing and adapting. And there really is a big commitment to training local workforce, which I think is really, really great. Well, and not something that's a big surprise when you consider how fast that market is growing and the rate at which it's going to demand staffing capacity. Yes, exactly. I think providers know that they need to establish a pipeline and they need to have people to staff those data centers because the business isn't going anywhere. Um, I was in Chile in March and I heard it from everywhere I talked to there. We as an industry need to make the move to secure those workers because we can't expect the circumstances to change. So there isn't anything like a data center, a college course or a degree you can get, but companies can put in place an efficient data center training course or maybe a six month training apprenticeship period where they can train their workforce and then hire them and retain them for several years and maybe have that person rise up within the company and eventually, who knows, even become a leader for them in the market. Uh, so I think data center providers are, are well aware of that. Wow. Well, hey, hopefully good signs for both the industry and the region. So good stuff. Well, this has been fascinating. Thank you, Pedro. No problem. Always nice to talk to you, Eric, and, and share some of our insights here. We're really excited about what we're seeing in the region. Uh, there is, like I said, ample room for growth. So uh, I think we're really going to see uh, Latin America take off there in the next few years. Wow. Well, even more than it has already. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, uh, that is great. Well, uh, thank you very much. But that is it for this episode of Next in Tech. Thanks to our audience for staying with us. And thanks to our production team, including Carolyn Wright and Ethan Zimmon on the marketing and events teams, and our agency partner, The 199. I hope you'll join us for our next episode, where we're going to be talking about an area of artificial intelligence that kind of got ignored. The idea of vector databases, something that's a, an old, old technology, but suddenly has come back into the fore. Uh, Jim Curtis and beyond it will dig into that. I hope you'll join us then, because there is always something next in tech.